Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Zombie U. So this is a, a fairly exciting Let's Look at and a fairly unique Let's Look at I guess uh, because this is inarguably one of the most anticipated games of the Wii U launch and the reason that I think it was so hotly anticipated and it's so important to the Wii U's success in marketing is because this is Nintendo and I guess it's developed by Ubisoft and published by Ubisoft but Nintendo was definitely heavily involved in the marketing for this. Uh, this is Nintendo's like stake in saying that they support like mature gaming like we're moving into the future we realize not everybody is always into the kind of uh, kid friendly and I'm not saying that in a negative way because I love Nintendo games but you know kid friendly colorful clean aesthetic type stuff we're gonna get a little grittier we're gonna get a little dirtier here and bloodier and more violent and what better way to do that with than than with the most overused trope in gaming these days so we've got some zombies involved that being said I have played about two three hours probably closer to three hours I guess of zombie U uh, up to this point and I'm happy to say that even though I hated this game at PAX the 15 minutes I played there uh, I think it holds up better when you're playing it at home you know with the with the lights off it's genuinely scary genuinely tense I don't think I mean the worst part about the game is its gameplay but we'll talk about that as we get in here but let's just start up our campaign I don't know why it says we only have an hour and 25 minutes played here because I definitely have more than that. Maybe I didn't save when I recorded, because this is my second time attempting to record a Zombie U video. We had some recording issues with the Wii U a little bit earlier, but that's okay. If so, at least I know that I'm going to be covering uh, some area that I've already covered before. But first things first about Zombie U, uh, loading screens are definitely the ugliest part of this game. Uh, this is new hardware, so I don't know whether to feel like, you know, get all oh, give Ubisoft some credit. It's new hardware. They're figuring out how to work with it. Or if I should be saying like, this game should load faster because this is like a brand new machine. I don't know, but there's loading screen upon loading screen in this this game, and some of them are a total pain in the ass. So we're stall, we're uh, spawning here, and then the prepper is probably gonna talk to us a little bit. So we're gonna spawn as a new guy because apparently I recently died in this game. Alright, so our quest right now is to get inside of Buckingham Palace. Now let's talk about kind of the unique factors of Zombie U here first. So one of the much, or one of the features of the game that most was made about, we're getting a little framey here too, which is weird, but um, one of the features of the game that was most marketed is this kind of Dark Souls mechanic where basically you play as different survivors over and over. So I'm playing as the street peddler, as you saw when you loaded in. Uh, and if I die, then I will lose like all of my gear that person that used to be me will become a zombie in the world that I can kill and then get my gear back. But I'll respawn as a completely new person with a completely new, uh, you know, occupation. The, the good side about this is that it makes things kind of interesting. Is there anything to loot here? No, there is not. Um, it makes things kind of interesting that, like, when you die, you don't just respawn as the same character. On the other hand, it is a little bit shallow because when you respawn, like, it doesn't really give you a backstory on each player. I mean, I understand why that is completely impossible to do, but that being said... I think it would have been cool if, you know, maybe this mechanic is explained later in the game, but it would have been cool uh, if we had a little bit more backstory on who these people were. So right now, the other thing about Zombie U is that this is one of the first games that I've played for the Wii U and, and recorded so far where the Wii U gamepad screen has something that is meaningfully different from the TV. So I'm just going to have to describe to you what's going on here because as of yet, I don't have a great way of capturing footage from this screen itself. Basically, right now, I'm just choosing uh, which destination I want to go to. There is like a fast travel setup, basically. So I'm going to travel to uh, Queen Victoria Memorial here. I'm very, very early on with the Survivor. I only have two uh, different shortcuts located, but prepare to uh, get used to this loading screen. Usually about, you know, 10 to 15 seconds long, and uh, happens all the goddamn time as you are traveling. But pretty soon we're going to get into some actual, like, meaningful gameplay for Zombie U here. Now I should point out, I have pretty poor sound for what's going on, so it's going to be difficult for me to actually... Here are zombies due to my audio setup here, but I'm gonna do my best to be diligent regardless. This game's pretty hard. I've died seven, in this save anyway, I've died seven times in like the first hour and a half. Uh, it's unfortunate that I didn't save the last video, but that's okay because I, I know where we're going now, so maybe I'll do a little bit better. So on my gamepad right now, I see basically a top down map as well as some interface. So I can change my weapon. Right now, I've got a cricket bat for melee attacking. I've also got a gun, which I'll pull out here with six bullets. I've got a flashlight which I can turn on and off, and I can use, uh, just tapping on the screen gives me a radar ping, which will allow me to see uh, living things in our near vicinity. But anyway, right now, our basic goal is to pick the locks to the sewers of Buckingham Palace and get inside. So as of right now, there hasn't really been too many story beats. Basically, I am 
uh, playing as these random survivors. As we open this door here, we might end up... Oh, I know exactly where we are right now. Um, and we're all being instructed by this guy called the Prepper, who seems like an ex-military guy. He's like your cliche kind of conspiracy theorist who is thinking like, you know, the world is run by reptilian humanoids that shapeshift and hold positions of power in the world. Which, I mean, my main problem with that is that we all know that that's true, right? Like, the Queen of England is a reptilian, shapeshifting humanoid. So why go over that? It's just common knowledge. So I'm just scanning here uh, with my radar to see if there's anything. It doesn't appear to be so. Uh, I just need to check something quickly in our settings to make sure that this is recording properly. So let's go to options. Display and sound options. How about sound output? Flat. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so you guys should be able to hear what's going on here. Apologies for stuff like this. It's just a necessary evil when you're dealing with a new console. So there is... A miniature safe house here, something with some supplies for us, so we are going to load into, or not load into, but just open up this door. This is near where I died as my last survivor, I think. Oh, and we do have some zombies out here, so I'm just going to close this door quickly and see if there's any supplies here to loot. One of the cool things you can do in Zombie U, uh, as I turn off my flashlight to save battery, is you can scan by using the left bumper on the Wii U gamepad. You can look for stuff uh, in the environment and see if there's anything. So I can, like, scan this door. This will mark it on my map as a door. I could scan this junction box here. That's what gave me uh, access to the map. Are there any items in here? It appears not. So, okay, we are good to go then. So let's turn on our flashlight again to get ready. Get ready to leave here. There is a living thing. I'm not sure if it's a zombie, but it's probably a zombie. Sometimes they can be rats as well, so I'm just pinging radar. Oh, it's just a crow. Okay. Oh, but there's one beside us as well. Just a crow again, I think. Okay, I think we're safe to move forwards. There is a... You're definitely rewarded in this game for being... Oh, there's a zombie right there. For being uh, more slow and methodical. Now, you know, I mentioned this in the new Super Mario's video. When it comes to these Wii U games, we got to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, the good with Zombie U is that I think it really nails the aesthetic of, like, a survival horror game. Uh, in fact, it, it reminds me a lot of older survival horror games from, like, the uh, N64 and PlayStation 1 era in that, you know, the aesthetic is really creepy. There's a lot of jump scares. This game can be genuinely tense and scary at times. Uh, but it reminds me of those games in a bad way as well. Let's loot this guy and see if there's anything here. He's got a candy bar, which I'm going to put in my backpack, and three bullets. Oh, uh, we'll put those three bullets up there. There we go. So we've got nine bullets for our gun yet now, which is not a lot. And I think this is where we want to go. We want to pick this lock. Before I continue on that tangent I was on, I should just mention there's a lot of this stuff in the game. Right now I'm looking at the gamepad and basically uh, I'm doing like an iOS mini game where I'm just like tapping to get in. I'm just going to take a quick look around here for items, just in case there's anything over here that I'm missing. It's kind of cool, like you, you hit the left trigger or left bumper, and then you just like move around your gamepad, and it allows you to look around the environment to see what's up. Anyway, I, I see some zombies, so we're just going to get down to the sewers here quickly. May or may not have a loading screen, but yes, as I was saying before, there, it reminds me of both positively and negatively of those early survival horror games. The negative is that the gameplay, I think, is super clunky. Uh, and oftentimes even tedious, so I have no map down here, which is a problem for me. Uh, I'm just going to radar ping and see there's something behind me. It may or may not be a zombie. Oh, jump scare, it's a zombie. Uh, the melee combat is unbelievably tedious. Like, one-to-one, -one, zombies don't represent too much of a threat. However, they do represent so much of an annoyance. Is this guy? He's empty, okay. Um, they do represent a huge annoyance, unfortunately. Because every zombie... Oh, another loading screen here. Hopefully this... Oh, that one was not... Very long at all. Excellent. Some of them have been up to like 30 seconds long, unfortunately. That is not scannable. Um, but, this is a zombie in here, I believe. Yes. Again, if you're not paying attention, if you're going a little bit fast and rushing through things, you'll probably get scared by these, but I'm using my radar, so that minimizes the jump scares a little bit. But, uh, melee combat, I find incredibly tedious. That's six more bullets, which is awesome. So we're up to 13 now. Actually, I should loot him again. And put the rest of those bullets in my backpack. 13 is the maximum that the gun can hold in one clip. Uh, how about over here? We got another... We should probably double tap this guy. It's always good practice just to make sure these zombies are dead. Because some of them will reanimate. And there's obviously a zombie down here. Does he have any means with which to get up? Pretty good that he knows how to use the staircase. I haven't really finished the, my train of thought on this yet. Suffice it to say, I think the gunplay in this game is actually alright sometimes. Uh, but the melee play... Is oftentimes annoying as hell. There's another something around here. It might just be a rat. I think it was just a rat. But genuinely, you know, the positives of this game 
uh, are that it's it's genuinely quite scary at times and quite tense. Like you can die very easily. I should mention that. Um, like there is a health system. So like if you get hit by a zombie once, you're not gonna die. But uh, if you get hit by a zombie like five or six times, which is very easy to happen if there's a horde or something. Um, oh, what have I done? Oh, I'm putting my backpack over my head so it doesn't get wet. That makes sense. I wish they did that in DayZ. Uh, is this guy gonna come for me? Yes, indeed he is. Come for me, baby. My flashlight's almost out of batteries, but it does function on a rechargeable battery. So if I turn it off for a second, it'll go way back up, and then I'll turn it back on. Lasts a long time. Flashlight battery management hasn't really been a big deal so far. Is it the same dude? It is the same dude. Yes, I can't stress enough that the, the melee combat in this game I find pretty tedious. He's dead. Uh, but the gunplay is okay, but also you don't want to use the guns because ammo is super limited. And beyond that, how do I... I gotta vault over this. There we go. Uh, ammo is super limited and obviously it attracts attention as well. More zombies or are these rats? I think those are rats. Whenever I say like, are there zombies around here, that's me pinging my radar to see if there's anything uh, going on. Yeah, those look like just rats. Anything in here? Another zombie. Should, uh, the flashlight is on. Sometimes things can still be a little dark. Uh, but yes, as I was saying before, you know, you can get hit five or six times and, and still be alive. However, there is like a special move basically that the zombies can do which will uh, infect you instantly and that results in an instant death. Now you are usually able to find your corpse. There are some more life forms in here. You're usually able to find your corpse. I'm just going to turn off my flashlight for a second so I can regenerate it. It was at like 30%. Um, and, well not your corpse, but like your previously played character. And then you can loot, kill and loot your character, which will, of course, give you the ability to get your old stuff. However, for whatever reason, I guess my old character is just like despawned from the game or something. Do we have anybody in here? No, we do not. What did I tell you? Anyway, um, in terms of the, the actual story of the game, not very much has been revealed so far. But there's a, a mystical figure from English history known as John D, who apparently prophesied that some kind of apocalypse or pox like this would happen. Uh, and now there's a number of conflicting figures, and maybe not conflicting, but a number of figures who are trying to, uh, you know, retrieve artifacts of D's work to maybe figure out what's going on here. As of right now, it's very, like, England-focused. We have no idea if this is also happening, you know, outside of the rest of the world, 28 Days Later style, or if it's... Just us suffering from this uh, affliction. But, you know, the story seems interesting so far, but that's not really what's keeping me around here. What's keeping me around and playing, although I'm not sure that I'm going to finish the whole game, uh, is the, the neat kind of horror aesthetic. This is really the only game of its kind on the Wii U right now. And I do have a map in here, which is good. So I can see what the heck is going on. And I believe we're going to meet a new character soon, which is cool. Uh, scan for remote hacks. Sometimes the game can be a little gimmicky like this. You gotta, like, remotely hack the door, and then this guy's gonna open it for us. I'm not sure if that is just a way to mask a loading screen, but, uh, you know, that happens fairly often. If so, it's a fairly clever way to mask a loading screen. By the way, the worst is sometimes you'll have these doors that you have to open that have loading screens behind them, but it will take, like, 30 seconds. The worst is, like, this shortcut that you have right at the very beginning of the game, or within the first hour, for sure. So you take the sh you load into the game. That's a loading screen. You take the shortcut to the first area, that's a loading screen. Then the very first door you open to move on has like a 20 second loading screen attached to it as well. It is frustrating as hell. Now I just ping my radar and I don't really see anything going on in here. We are inside of Buckingham Palace though. Uh, and I'm just going to take a quick scan. I thought you said I was going to be alone down here. You ding dong. So I'm just scanning a bunch of things on my map right now to update it. Most of them are just doors, uh, but there's a couple items as well, which are important to scan uh, in order to make sure that you're looting everything, because sometimes it's not immediately apparent what's lootable and what isn't. So now on, on my map, on the Wii U gamepad screen, I have like a top-down indicator of what's here. So I've got paint spray. Uh, I'm not really sure what I can use that for yet. We can use so certain supplies to like barricade doors and stuff. we got a capacity upgrade. I've never seen that before, which is great. Uh, no idea what to do with that yet, but it's cool that it exists. Um, I guess I have to pick the lock here. Yes, indeed I do. So again, Kind of like iOS style mechanic here where I'm basically just rotating the lock pick until it vibrates and then holding it in position to open the door. Should have uh, pinged before I opened that door just to see if there were any zombies in there. In terms of like 
I don't trust these guys. Is this guy speaking to us yet? I can't tell because, like, uh, uh, some of the sound is going to be coming out through the screen and some of it is going to be coming out through the... Oh my god, it's too loud. Some of it is going to be coming out through the, the headphones, but I have my screen turned absolutely all the way down. So he's probably talking right now. But I would love him to just open up the door for me. That would save, my, uh, save me a little bit of time here. Can I open this yet? Locked door. What I do remember about this guy, and I have subtitles on, so I'm not worried too much about talking over top of him, is that he takes forever to make very, very simple points. Now, we are going to have some legitimate combat coming up at some point very soon, so I'm just scanning my radar to figure out where we're supposed to go, and I'm going to quickly scan around here. We've got an infected with no item. For this guy, we've got an infected with no item. We have a retinal scanner door, which we need security clearance to get through. And we have a door that is open. So I guess we're going to go through that door, and we're going to talk to this gentleman in here, who is a new character for us. If this is indeed where we're supposed to go to meet him, and I think it is. I should be scanning my radar. Don't see anybody, though. Sorry. And... Just looking on my map to figure out where to go. Here again, I apologize for talking over this guy. He hints that there's something to do with, like, the Omega Group soldiers. I'm pretty sure that the Prepper, the guy who gives us or gave us all the instructions at the beginning, is an ex-Omega Group soldier. But it's never explicitly said, at least not yet. So as we open up this door, we can see, oh, there's zombies in cages. Something's not right. Obviously, this is just set up to give this guy some time to make his points. Alright, so we're going to talk to this guy. Again, unfortunately, I remember that he takes 435 years in order to actually make his points. Maybe I can find a second pair of headphones to plug in to my computer so I can hear what he's saying. Sweet beard, bro. He looks like uh, that blonde character actor who's a David Hayter? Is that it? I don't remember. Or is that a game design guy? I can never remember. The guy who was also in Seven, he played the, or not Seven, uh, Twelve Monkeys, played the villain in Twelve Monkeys. Anyway, he's playing the part of the CDC scientist, I guess it's not the CDC because it's in England, but um, the guy trying to find the cure. We're just going to scan everything. Barred door, no item to loot, nothing going on there. Uh, did this guy want our help? I can't remember. Obviously, it looks like there's something a little bit more sinister going on with this guy than meets the eye originally because, hey, what's going on with all these zombies over here? Did he purposely infect these guys to get more test subjects? It's possible, I guess. Alright, so he needs us to get this book, De Remedy Secreti, by Conrad Gesner. And it's in the palace library, which means going upstairs. Would you be so kind? The bunker elevator can take you up to the palace. I'm speaking faster than you. Please let me move onwards. I desperately need to keep momentum going in this video. We've only fought like two zombies. So in terms of like danger in this game, it might seem right now like it's super easy because I haven't really faced death. What I will say is that uh, the game doesn't really like one on one zombies are not a problem at all. Where things become very difficult is when you end up with a horde and that happens with some fairly, it, it happens regularly I should say. Uh, this is not where we want to go obviously. This is where we want to go I guess. So we're going to remove this bar. This just involves tapping on the Wii U gamepad screen. Again, some of the mechanics are a little bit gimmicky, like iOS style. Um, do we have anything in here? I'm going to just take a second for my flashlight to recover its battery, because it was at like 4%. And obviously if the flashlight goes out, that's bad for both of us. Me, because I'm going to get killed by zombies, and you, because you won't be able to see me getting killed by zombies. Alright, so we're back up in like the 80s here. I'm just going to close this door. Turn on the flashlight again. Recharges super quickly, as you can see. And we are going to go, I think it's through this door over here now. I'm just looking down at my map. I really like the way that this game utilizes the Wii U gamepad. It's the first, like, meaningful... Or not the first, I guess, because Nintendo Land has meaningful differences in its gameplay as well. Uh, this guy, I think, is still alive based on my map here. But we'll see as we move in here. I remember there's a room that's very combat-heavy here. Let's just bash this guy's brains in. He's dead. Uh, we want to go through... Oh, same thing here. Do we have anything on these guys? No, we do not. We want to go through this door. Oh, this is the royal elevator. All right. Again, possibly cleverly la masked loading screen. Although, do I have to hit the button? I guess I have to hit the button. Uh, we'll go to Dr. Palace Library floor. I guess that's just going to be up. 
Anyway, I guess it's not really cleverly masked if we actually do have to load in here, but it's just gonna load us into the next elevator model, and then we're gonna go through another, like, dialogue, which I'm pretty sure is a masked loading screen. There's a lot of loading in this game, and I'm not sure if it's the Wii U that's slow at loading, or Zombie U itself that is slow at loading. Uh, but certainly loading screens are one of the most major inconveniences in this game. The main reasons I don't have a fun time 100% of my time with this game is because of the loading screens and clunky melee combat. Apart from that, I think Zombie U is pretty cool, and as it's the only game of its kind on the Wii U, I mean, I don't think it's the kind of game that people are going to be talking about in, you know, even a year from now. I don't think people are going to be like, whoa, remember Zombie U? That was crazy good. Uh, but it is an interesting game for sure, especially for a, a console or a company, I guess, that is not really uh, used to making games like this. What did I find already? Royal Attache case. I have no idea what that is. Queen's Letters, I guess. Let's see if I can open those up and read them. I don't want to read them on the gamepad, though, is the thing. Uh, I guess they're just quest items. Yeah, I don't want to read them on the gamepad. I want to read them on the screen, which we cannot do. Alright, whatever. Let's just go back here. I'll read those on my own personal time. I hope they are smutty love letters. Alright, so I do see a life form in here. This is the room where we have to deal with 100,000 zombies. I hate to spoil it for you, but I remember this. So let's take out our gun, and we'll do things this way. Now, here's one of the most divisive things about Zombie U. One headshot with a pistol is not enough to kill a zombie, which flies in the face of everything I've ever learned about zombies. That being said, there are more powerful weapons you get later. Oh my god. Don't fuck this up for myself. Um, there are more powerful weapons you get later that make it easier to kill them, like kill them with one hit. By the way, this is a special kind of zombie that can actually vomit on us. And is annoying as heck. I should be using my melee weapon because I don't want to waste any more bullets. Uh, but I really don't want that guy to vomit on us. So I've leveled up here. I have no idea what that means. We do have more bullets in our backpack. Or maybe we don't actually. We do have candy bar though. So I'm going to have to stick with my melee weapon for now because I'm completely out of ammo. That's how quickly 13 ammo can get uh, lifted off of you. There's a Molotov cocktail in this guy's backpack. So we're going to pick that up and maybe equip it up here. Who knows? Maybe I'll end up using that in the future. Is there anything else in here? I should scan my radar first. Looks like we're reasonably safe. Uh, this guy's got some flares and uh, some cake. I guess you can see it there on the bottom left of the screen. Now, how about this gentleman right here? Empty. But fairly good resources. You never know. We might end up using that Molotov cocktail in the near future. And we're just going to continue making some progress here. I'm truly surprised that we have not died yet. Uh, because my average life with a survivor is probably like less than half an hour for sure. Probably much less than that. Maybe around the like 15 minute mark. This guy's easy enough to kill. Just want to double tap them whenever possible. He's empty. We're probably going to find a lot of empty guards around here, unfortunately. And I mean, that, that makes sense for a zombie game, you know. Kill that beef eater. Um, the reason it makes sense for a zombie game is because you expect that everything is... Oh, God! I didn't even see him. Don't vomit on me, you shit lord. God damn it. Okay, we're going to have to eat some cake after this to get better. I can't even see what's going on now. We're going to survive, though. I really should have scanned my radar a little bit more. Part of that is just because I have no audio cues. And this game uses audio cues to tell you when there's zombies around a lot of the time. You know, screaming or moaning or the sound of a smoking zombie vomiting on you. So far, there's been no explanation for why there's special kinds of zombies. But I expect that there will be some explanation at some point in the game. We have another cake here as well as another Molotov cocktail. We're going to open up our bag quickly and we're going to eat uh, some cake, which is going to refill our life gauge a little bit. Bit by a zombie? Just have an instant cake, man. Solves all your problems. Alright, so again, I'm just pretty much going to ignore what this guy is saying. No, oh, another zombie. These are, guys are the most annoying. The zombies in the riot helmets basically lifted like straight from Left 4 Dead. Because it takes us like 10 hits to be able to see them or get at their heads. And again, melee combat. Just hold left trigger, smash right trigger when appropriate. So one versus one can be real, real tedious. Like, I feel like there's 99% chance I'm gonna beat this guy. Just let me kill him in one hit. Like, let me do a killing shot early, please. Uh, looting. He, oh, I didn't want to loot the suitcase. I wanted to loot the body. Does the body have anything? I guess we'll never know. Uh, I just need to ping a little bit on my map. Looks like we're okay. We can't get through here, though. I know for a fact there's another special zombie in here, so we need to scoot over this thing right here and then go to town on his bitch ass. Yeah, there he is. But I think there's only one of them. 
So let's just quickly... Oh, I thought I was worried about that. So I was just moving around, so hopefully he couldn't vomit on me, but he did vomit on me. So I'm going to push him back and just smash him in the face with a cricket bat. I assume there are other weapons you can get. Like, when we played the game at PAX, uh, I think I got a sword or a knife or something, which might allow me to kill him a little bit faster. Remember, we still are early in the game here, so maybe the melee combat gets better with weapons that are not the cricket bat. Uh, but for right now, a little the combat is a little tedious and a little bit... Uh, Repetitive. That being said, like, I, I enjoy this game. It's not a, a 9 out of 10 game. It's, you know, a, a 6 or a 7. But it's a strong 6 or a 7. I don't want to climb on her. I wanted to loot her. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear 6 out of 10, they think that me makes a shit game. Well, I guess if you're, like, solely reading, like, GameSpot and stuff like that, then, indeed, 6 out of 10 would be a shit game. But I'm, this is an above-average game. Uh, and it works, it works well. It, it also benefits from being the only game of its kind on the Wii right now, basically. Uh, I can see a zombie through here, but I'm pretty sure this is actually where I'm gonna stop the video for now. But as always, thank you guys for watching. We're gonna, well, I'm not gonna end the video just yet, but I am gonna quit out and show you the menu screen while I give my final impressions of the game. Uh, overall, I definitely think, like, if you're the kind of person that's into games like this and you're not contented with merely one tone of game, which is probably what you have if you have the Wii U without this game right now. Like, if I only had Wipeout 3, Nintendo Land, and New Super Mario Bros. U, this game would be definitely a breath of fresh air, and it is a breath of fresh air, I guess. Uh, on the console, at least. Obviously, there's tons of games like this on other consoles. And, you know, it uses the gamepad in a meaningful way. I feel bad that Fox and I shit-talked this game on our channel so much after we played it at PAX, because it, it's a kind of game that does not benefit from being shown on a loud show floor, where you wait in line for, like, two hours to play. Play this, you know, by yourself, quiet room, lights off. It's genuinely scary. Gameplay is tedious, but the aesthetic and the atmosphere, to a certain extent, might make up for it uh, for a lot of people. And basically the biggest strength about this game right now, what are your other options if you want something like this on the Wii U? Uh, I think it's worth buying, if for no other reason than to basically get a feel for a direction that the Wii U uh, software could possibly go as we move forwards. And it's a, an interesting step. Uh, and the interesting use of the uh, the gamepad hardware as well. It's not just gimmicky, although there are some gimmicky elements of it. Overall, you know, the little thumbs up to Zombie U. It's not the great console or system seller that I think a lot of people expected that it would be, for whatever reason they expected that. Uh, but it is, it, it turned out much better than I expected it to be, which, you know, with a name like Zombie U, I expected it to be basically garbage. And from the early gameplay that I played, I did not like it at all. But I'm liking it a lot more. You know, playing it by myself and really letting myself get involved in the, the spirit of the game. I don't think it's going to change the world. I don't think, you know, in a year or two from now, people are going to really remember this game that fondly at all. Hopefully. If people remember this game fondly in 2013 and 2014, uh, that means that the Wii U has had some kind of catastrophic software failure uh, over those two years. But in any case, I'm just rambling now. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Of course, uh, the Wii U setup has been pretty hard for us. Uh, from a recording standpoint. I think we fixed all the problems now, so more Wii U videos will be coming, provided more games keep coming, which is, I guess, up in the air right now. But, again, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.